Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Walking Dead World Beyond. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, let's pick up with Leo's explanation to the group about what Huck brought to him. That basically find out what actually killed everyone in Omaha was actually a chemical weapon that the... Uh, CR has been working on. And so they brought empties in to cover it up. Now, obviously we know that they've been concocting a weapon that will kill the dead and make it so that the dead will never come back. They want it to be able to kind of, that way they can like in one fell swoop wipe out all the dead and kind of prevent this from ever rising up again. So I guess the reason why they won tested it on Omaha, like obviously there's other factors which we'll get to later, but uh, first and foremost, is because I guess they want to test it on regular people because, for one, uh, they want to also test if those people who were killed would come back or not. So I guess it was just like, one, just seeing how effective it is as a weapon, but also maybe to see, like, to prevent, like, the dead from ever being reanimated. It's probably, like, what that was for, why they tested it on the, uh, but also maybe, like, they also brought the MDA in, not just to cover it up, but to see if there were some lingering effects that would make it so that I guess if it was in the air enough, maybe it uh, killed the empties as well. Uh, but the second aspect to it that uh, does get brought up in this episode, which was kind of my thought, was kind of like the CR is basically a life raft and there's only so much resources um, and, you know, en there's only enough resources for uh, a certain amount of people in this particular, li this well, both literal and metaphorical life raft to a certain extent, right? So, I guess it's almost like the whole Titanic thing of like, oh, isn't there enough room on the door for both of us? That whole thing, right? It might not be the best, like, comparison, but... Because even Huck is saying, like, that could be why General Bill, like, want, because it's just like, right, like, they want to keep what they have, and they want to, like, right, like, you guys would be a drain on our resources, because more people brought in from the outside could lead to arguments, that's how a lot of, like, groups end up falling apart, is because somebody wants more than someone else, and so, like, you, you rather than even, like, dealing with that issue and what, letting it be the downfall of the CR, you're basically wiping it out, like, and that's what I thought, like, oh, you're wiping them out to take their resources for yourself, because the CR is the ones who decide who and who they let in and who they don't. So that makes you wonder, like, obviously Omaha was sacrificial. I'd assume Portland's the same way as well. So, but obviously based on what Leo's seen, because Percy was like, hey, so could this all be another, like, manipulation by Huck? But it's like, no, this is 100% what's going on. Like, there's no way she could fake it. All this seems legitimate. So hope is coming from the perspective of, well, we got to stick around because we don't know. Like, all the scientists here all want to work for the future. So there's no guarantee that every scientist here is a part of this or is aware of what's really going on here. Uh, the complicated thing is going to be like, well, even if, like, do some of them already know and those who don't know uh will they be disgusted by this or will they immediately go like well i didn't know but now that i do know i'm in full support of it because it is because everything with related to the cr is just, is in the vein of the greater good whatever sacrifices have to be made is because of the greater good so i just think that's such a a fascinating element to consider in all of this so it especially gets complicated for uh, Leo when he figures out that Lila is a part of this because he initially was, um, he, like, she was, got, like, a bag of clothes or something and she dropped it. And the moment she picked it all up, Leo thought back to a memory of, like, him and Lila first hitting it off. And, you know, because she was like, oh, um, he was like, no, 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 just call me Leo. And thinking back to it, he saw a lot of the same paperwork of what Huck got access to. He saw her with it. So now he wants to know how much does she know to the point that her, that uh, uh, he uh, wants to invite her over for, for dinner. Like they already had dinner plans anyway, but he wants to bring Hope and Iris in and just make it seem like, oh, it's a family thing. But then Iris kind of goes off on her because obviously she used to test on like she's like oh, I used to be part of big farmer so sadly we worked on animals and so her perspective on things is a few sacrifices the sacrifice of one for the many type of situation so um 
that perspective on things obviously iris doesn't dig because she knows like right you're talking about animals which sucks already on that perspective but i also know you i know that you didn't just stop there you you went much bigger and the fact is you had that perspective when it comes to animals what are humans they're animals too so you just apply that that what you do is for the greater good but it is the problem of what about the disease that you create in a tent like uh you know the, the disease that you're trying to destroy like is it all worth it when there's so much of a heavy cost for the cure? But, you know, for her, it's just kind of like, right, you just have to, you just kind of deal with the hand, hand that you're dealt kind of thing of like, just like, um, I forgot how she phrased it, but basically, um, there, that's the like give and take of life. You have to get, you have to take a little to give a little, well, you have to give a little to like for the greater good. So she's saying that's just part of life. But Iris is like, no, it's a choice. You want to just make it seem like it's part of life. But no, like that's you making an excuse at the end of the day, your choices. And obviously that struck a chord with Lila, which even Hope's calling out like, what are you doing, Iris? We're supposed to be keeping her busy, pre preoccupied and like not like going full nuclear. But for Iris, she's upset because it's just like hearing that rhetoric from them. It's just even more reason why she can't say like, because for her, it's like they are the enemy, not just one, the entirety of everything. But Hope sees the good in this, that it's not all bad. Like, that's the thing of like, because even um, Hope was like, oh, I thought I was the one that we had to be afraid of going full nuclear. But in that moment. Uh, you did like you went off like a bomb like what are you doing like I'm supposed to be the one but once again like it's so interesting how that has switched for them because that used to be Iris but now when it comes to the CR Iris is fly, fly, like she's more just like her anger is consuming her where it's hope it's looking at the perspective on things because they're still what the CR do, did doesn't isn't justified but at the very least not everything and everyone a part of it is bad like people are here trying to do good that you know the science behind what they're trying to accomplish this means like repairing the world getting rid of the dead we never have to fear the dead ever coming back like they are like we can wipe out the mass majority of like the dead if we're able to do what they do we could take this world back from them so there is that perspective, that hopefulness that she has, but Iris isn't really thinking about, well, she is to some extent. I think it's like the CR is too much of a danger to be left alone. It needs to be wiped out because just as much as the dead is a plague, I think she probably feels like the CR itself is a plague as well. Like it needs to be wiped out. I mean, it wiped out an entire community. Oh, well, Omaha just you know, just to test stuff out, but also potentially what, based on what Huck said, like just because there would have been attacks on the resources, they could have, they would have been more of an issue than, you know, once again, the CR has to willingly let people in. If you're not kind of in the inner circle, you're disposable. It, it, at least that's how it kind of presents itself. So we kind of do get more understanding of why Lila does what she does. It isn't just about the dead. Why she works so hard is for her family because her daughter, uh, Mia, got bitten by a guy in the backyard and um her husband uh kevin wanting to stay with her slept in her bed and the moment they uh moment she came back around uh mia had bitten her husband and they they both had changed and they got pinned on a bookcase but she uh experimented on him which is like whoa the fact that she was even willing to go that far but for her it's like she was trying to do whatever it takes and she sounds like she went on some fringe science level stuff of i'm going to do whatever it takes to bring my family back and that's her main motivation there why she does this because i think it's also like just so what she went through no one else has to do that like she was unable to save her family she wants there to be a chance to save future families other people's families like they're her big motivation and obviously for leo he understands that more so than anything it's like you're not an evil person it's just like that's the thing of like sometimes that road uh, i keep saying it over and over and over and over again but the road to hell you know paved good intentions and all that she truly believes like she like despite what sacrifices she has to make it's for the greater good like you know because it isn't just about me this isn't just about one person this is about everyone so a few sacrifices along the way a few you got to crack a few eggs to make an omelet type of thing you know so so Leo, I think, has gained a little bit more understanding of why Lila does what she does. But he also, it does confirm for him, like, right, she is neck deep in all this. She's just as much a part of this. But I think, whereas Hope is kind of skewing more to, like, yeah, not everyone here at the CR is evil. I think Leo has that perspective, too. But Iris, from the outside looking in, like, she hasn't spent time here. But even if she did, like, her mind is set. She killed a soldier, and she's like, 
I've, I, you know, she felt it haunted her for a bit, but it's like, no, I'll do it again because they're the enemy. They killed everyone we know. The home we knew was taken away from us because of them, which we still don't even know what happened to Silas, like how he got caught. Did he wait around too long or was someone expecting him? Like, I'm, I'm curious, like, it might just be a thing of like Dennis, like figured out, like maybe tracked them and knew what was what. Because I saw a clip of the next episode where it seems like Dennis is, I'm assuming, talking to him. So I guess Dennis was like, yo, what were you up to? Like, what were you doing? Like, he figured, like, Silas was doing something suspicious. So, I don't know. Or maybe someone caught wind of Silas and uh, Percy, Elton, and Iris talking last episode. So maybe something along those veins. But, um... Other than that, you had Huck and Felix going into Lila's, um lab to kind of see like what she's really like you know what she's up to obviously they couldn't get into her lab because it would have to you'd have to rewrite like the cards to give them access because she has like higher access but um there's like a place that she visits often that um huck and uh felix were going to go to obviously it turns into this conversation too about uh huck wanting to walk away from everything and uh for Felix, it's like, you can't. Like, can you really say, you wanted the truth, you wanted answers to all of this, but there's no way you can just walk away, especially because they had the conversation of, right, because um, there was a whole thing about, like, right, you did what you did, so is there a chance that your mom would have done what she done? And it's like, yeah, like, there, there is a chance that wasn't, like, an accident. Like, my mom would have definitely, like, the only person who could give those type of orders is General Bill, and it's like, obviously, that my mom would have had to have seen those orders to some extent but it's the thing of like right you can't turn your back now now that you know this much and you said it yourself you wanted answers you're just as in this as in any of us uh, you got to start seeing the CR for what it is and so Huck ends up also talking about her and Dennis about like you know it's like right why she did what she did um it's because she's like right if I was good at that um looking at the um the, day, the logs and stuff like that, she's like, we would have never met. And she goes into like, right, the reason why she was given the Omaha position was because she screwed up, you know, because uh, she tried to protect her husband, which Phyllis is like, wait, you're, you were married? She's like, still am. You know, I, I loved him. And so he made a mistake. And which even that mistake is a situation where things went bad and Dennis made a choice. And she was like, yeah, I agree. He may actually help more people than it did more good than harm. But the problem was Dennis was drinking and uh, she tried to alleviate the situation. She tried to make it seem like she was the one that uh, gave the order so it fall back on her. But the problem was that when she tried to like cover up everything, like the tapes and everything, like there was like a tape involved of like recordings of it. Uh, she tried to get rid of it. But the problem was that she didn't delete the logs of her what she was up to so that's how she got found out so she was she ended up learning from that mistake this time around because the whole point was to cut the power so that felix could go inside because there's going to be a backup generator and the power would come back on in like two minutes so but ultimately felix was in there and he found that they have a lot more a lot more of the thing that they use in omaha but sadly the power came back on before um Felix could get out, so he was stuck in there for a while, and that place is freezing cold, so he's in there, like, at, the last time we see his watch, he was in there for, like, 29 minutes or something like that, so, and he was wondering whether a Huck had kind of abandoned or not, but luckily she hadn't, she had to, like, you know, hack the, the cards to give her access, so she's like, right, I need to go back and delete those to make sure, like, no one follows her trail, so, like, the mistake I made last time doesn't get made again. But she says, like, you're right. I am here in this with you. Like, do know I got your back until I don't. Which, obviously, for me, that's very foreshadowing. Because, like, I kept thinking, like, I don't, I think Huck, I knew, like, Huck would choose their side. But I think she's not going to survive this. I hope she does, but I don't think she will. Because it might even be a situation where she sacrificed. Either she gets caught and killed or she sacrifices herself uh, to make up for all that she's done. Now, I think her mom isn't too above killing her. I mean, granted, she's already been to demotion, and it's like, this, 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 like, what she did before, like, uh, backing Dennis, pales in comparison to what's going on right now. So, I think that's the interesting um, thing of, like, she, 
this this would go like because what she's doing is a very it's a bigger threat to the CR as a whole. So like she'd suffer probably bigger com uh, consequences that even uh, it's like right we all have to be willing to make a sacrifice. So her sacrifice might be like well if I if my daughter has to die to make up for this then so be it. So I do I don't. I don't. It's not a thing where I feel like she's too above it. I think she is someone that is willing to make that sacrifice, even her own daughter, if it comes down to that. So, that's definitely going to be interesting. Um, but on the, another aspect to this is Iris. She was supposed to uh, send like a small note, letting like uh, Elton and Will know that they were going to be delayed. So they're still working things out. But even Percy knew that she wrote something more, considering the fact is that she took a long time to write a note, which she was like, no, nah, I'm not I'm not a narc. I'm just observing. And she's like, what's a narc? And he's like, seriously? She's like, yeah. I'm like, is that such an antiquated term that like it's such an old old timing term that or is that just supposed to be representative of like Iris being the goody two shoes just that she is? She wouldn't never heard the word. narc. I don't know. Because it might just be because of Percy and his uncle. Like, it might just be like, right, they know that word. Or maybe that's just, oh, like, it feels like such an old 90s, like, term. Like, oh, you're such a narc. Like, you know, it, I, I think maybe that's what that's supposed to be representative of. Either way, it just shows, like, how adorable Iris is. Her being like, yeah, like, what is that? It just, it, Percy doesn't, it seems like he doesn't explain. But obviously, there's a conversation of, you know, he plans to, he promised to get Iris out of here fine, but he also promised that, promised to himself that he would make Huck pay. And hopefully, he's planning on keeping both promises. She's like, even if it costs you your life, he's like, I'm hoping it doesn't, but if it does, it does. So, but Will and Elton did get the note, and it turns out Iris is dead set on, once we find out what we're finding out, we're burning this place to the ground, which obviously, this place is home to a lot of research, a lot of, a lot of stuff you know, necessary for the future could be lost here and never, um, never, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Replicated, you know? So that's the complicated thing about that. But obviously Elton's not too happy about that. He brings up to Will, like, why it bothers him the most because what sucks about it is that Indira is sick and the help she gets from the CR, like, if the CRM gets burned to the ground, there's no saving that. So... Will and uh, Elton, like, obviously, it's like, right, uh, Will wants to break in there to get her what she needs, um, and even uh, Asha's brother's going with him, uh, it's like, let me and Elton stay, it's like, no, we need you to stay here, and uh, if things kind of go sideways or something, we want to make sure you're protected, but also, like, letting everyone know, because Indira's already in a complicated position, because, like, obviously, the work, like, the only reason why everything went down with Iris and Felix and Percy the way it did is because the rest of the leaders of uh, uh, the perimeter, like, backed uh, the play with Indira, so now, like, it turns into a voting situation, because it's like, the Indira is like, the, the, Let's let them cause a little hell. I mean, the CRM has had their boots on our neck for so long, so I agree. And someone else was saying, like, yeah, let them do it. But then, like, others are like, no. Now it's going to be like a com like conversation about a vote of confidence. So definitely things aren't going to go in Dara's way if word gets out about, like, the special treatment that she's getting. It makes you wonder, does someone secretly know and they're ready to use that against her now? Um, but as like, that was the whole thing they're trying to like keep away from all this because Indira did keep the peace, but then someone else, because whoever it is, the other leaders, it given the opportunity, well, cause things are okay for now, but eventually things will go sideways cause they're willing to give over Elton and, uh, Will just to appease the CRM. But it's also like, yeah, even if you hand them over, the CRM's going to be like, wait, you lied to us? Yeah, we won't, they definitely won't be so trusting to you going forward. You'll be on probation type of thing. I mean, for all we know, you might be technically already on probation and just like, right, you've already had your warning. Uh, you're too, you're, there's too much of a compromise when it comes to you guys. So we got to wipe you out. Maybe that's a justification. I don't know. Um, but aside from all, you know, the sad situation is, and this ends up tying into the end of the episode, Dev leads Will to where they are, um, there's a weak spot, but sadly, when it's all said and done, um, Dev ends up getting killed, and uh, Will ends up taking the gun from him, because it's like the gun that like his dad was like, that sucks, especially because Asha um, and uh, Elton were praying, you know, it's like, right, let's take like some of that energy from the dead, like as we're praying for them, like take some of that energy and put it towards making sure 
Dev and Will are okay, sadly. Because I guess they just, it's just bad luck because the, the patrols happen to be on higher alert right now because of everything that went down with what Huck and uh, Felix are doing. So I guess like that place is normally wouldn't be on as high alert as it was, but it was because of that. I think that's what that's supposed to be, just like uh, the domino effect of that happening kind of led to Dev getting killed, which is such a bummer. Like, and Dara lost a child. I should like lost her brother, it's just like, but it was all for the sake of helping Indira out, so I think that's also going to strike a chord with her, like, right, that happened because of that, so Will's got to be on the run, but also if they catch Will, that's going, wait, you're supposed to be dead, you're still alive, that's going to be a complicated thing, too, especially because we have Jadis, somehow I missed that part of the episode, I don't know how the hell that happened, I think it was like the tail end of another episode, and I missed it, like, between Lila and Jadis, I'm like, how the hell did I miss that part, like, when, like, one of the soldiers removes their helmet, and it's like, oh, it's Jadis, I'm like, huh, did not know her and, um, Huck had the uh, deep connection they did. It's like, right, you're the one, like, she's the one that trained Huck. I mean, Huck, that's, Huck is the one that trained her, sorry. And I was like, that's interesting. And so she's here uh, being a military person, uh, like a military, like, investigator and stuff. Turns out um, her mom, Jennifer's mom, asked her to look in to make sure that Huck's loyalties were still to her. Because, obviously, Jadis talks about, like, why that name resonates with her. It's like, obviously, it's not what her name was, but upon reinventing herself from this world, she's like, oh, I have my own people. I'm like, oh, yeah. And she references, like, how that all played out. Chose the wrong side and everything. So it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, that That does kind of suck. I mean, but it all worked out in the end. Well, not for your people. Obviously, like, Jadis ended up being the only one alive, and you join up with Rick and them, but still... Because Gabriel was kind of more... On, was the only one that was kind of really on her side during all that, wasn't it? But then she got a place amongst this uh, SRM because she's like, yeah, I brought her something valuable. I was like, oh, interesting. Uh, I'd assume... Like, it's so interesting to know you got this positioning. You've been working your way up because of Rick. Like, he was that valuable of an asset that it's like you were able to kind of uh, punch your own ticket card type of situation. And I thought that was so interesting. But also, she is the ambitious survivor that she is. She always has been kind of borderline opportunist. Um, I even love that she was talking about, yeah, like, if you want to lead your own group, like, create your own language and stuff like that. She reinvented herself. But, um... She talks to Huck about, like, you know, why she still goes by Jadis. And talks about how, like, that type of stuff doesn't leave you. It's still there. And even calls Jennifer Huck. She's like, my name's not Huck. It's Jennifer. Because she's trying to gauge whether or not all that time she spent undercover, whether or not it had an effect on her. Which, for uh, Jennifer, it's like, everything I've ever done should be enough proof of what I've done for the CR. But it's like, yeah, but no matter what, there'll always be more questions is kind of the whole point. So... Once again, it feeds more into what Huck has said of like, right, I'll try to be there until I can't be either because she'll be blocked out or she'll be killed. Like, I hope Huck doesn't die, but I get the feeling like that might be the direction they're going with that. So, but uh, Jade is keeping an eye on her. That means like Huck, rather, uh, Jennifer's going to have to be careful about any future support she gives the team. So, I mean, once again, also, Hope has also got to reign in Iris because Iris is about to bring down Hellfire upon the, uh, because Iris is the only, because Percy was like, no matter what you do, I support you, like, I trust you, which now Hope is the only one who knows what, I, well, other than Elton and Will, and w as well as, like, everyone back in um, the perimeter, like, amongst the group inside the uh, CRM, only uh, Hope knows about what Iris wrote. So she's probably probably going to bring that up to uh, not only Felix, but their dad as well. Probably even has to bring it up to Huck about, like, right, like, my, my sister's kind of like, let's bring Hellfire down on these people. So kind of not the best, especially with everything going on. And obviously Hope doesn't want everyone dead. Like, yeah, the CR sucks, but not everyone here is bad. But Iris can't see that, won't see that, you know, at all. So... How they handle that going forward is definitely going to be interesting. Um, but really, that's all I'm going to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, little light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.